Now we're going to talk about case number two for multiple sclerosis now. This case is a 45-year-old female who has had five years of multiple scler sclerosis diagnosis. And this is it, the complaints that she has left arm and hand and finger and bicep spasticity. She cannot oppose or extend her fingers. So the fingers are kind of curled. They oppose means they opposition, they can, uh, opposition like this, oppose the finger. So cannot do these opposition tests, thumb touching all the fingertips because of too much spasticity in the hand. And therefore, because you have, if you have that spasticity in the flexion position, then you cannot open your hand to reach her objects, right? So she, so she complains about inability to grasp objects. And she also suffers from foot drop. Oftentimes when the patient um, is uh, referred to the neurologist to confirm or just um, uh, rule out the policy of multiple sclerosis, it is actually diplopia or, or with double vision or, or foot drop are oftentimes the, uh, the first uh, warning signs that would alert a family physician to refer them to neuro neurologist to see what's going on. So the patient has this foot drop and therefore needs an ankle brace to prevent the foot from dropping. Otherwise the foot is dropping, they trip and, and kick themselves on the floor and then they, they obviously they fall and so forth. She also has, uh, but however, despite the motor deficits, sensorial aspect and the, and the reflexes are normal, at least for now. So um, my treatment is a combination of central nervous system treatment and peripheral nervous system treatment. So um, the central nervous system component, we will use scalp acupuncture as well as auricular acupuncture. Um, for, for this case, um, at the time I was doing this, I wasn't so knowledgeable about auricular yet. So this results you're gonna see was just due to, to scalp and peripheral acupuncture alone. So if this patient problem is on the left side, then you know that because of the decusation of the brain, the right hemisphere controls the left side of the body, you need to scalp the acupuncture over the right hemisphere. And therefore you would choose the leg and arm motor lines of the right hemisphere. But because there's a motor component involved and a cerebellum coordinates complicated movements, you need to treat the motor balance area. However, if you, if you, if you spend the time to understand neurology, that if you had to only choose one point out of the two balance area, it's actually the left hemisphere that matters. So, uh, so that means if you were to do, to do a balance line on the right hemisphere, it would not be relevant. The right hemisphere would fix the right side motor problems. Okay, so this is all has, a, this is all has a, a proper neuroanatomical understanding and a, a neural network understanding behind it. And what I actually do is I connect electricity from the left hemisphere cerebellum to the right hemisphere cerebrum. So I'm crossing electricity from right, right side, okay, over to the cerebellum on the other side. And that's just the central. What about the peripheral? Peripheral, we have techniques that's called sensory volley. And I'm gonna talk about the nerves that control the foot drop. The nerve is called the common peroneal nerve. And like I said, all these nerves already have a point that's been passed down, it's called Ling Ho. This Ling Ho is, um, uh, uh, reminds of, of Yang Ling Quan, which is called by 34, which means the, the Yang Spring uh, at, the, at the hill. Ling Ho means behind the hill. So the hill here is the head of the fibula. It's a very, very beautiful description of the body using poetic language. So the, it's behind the head of the scapulus where the common prayer nerve is located. And then as far as the opposition movement, you need to understand that this is actually due to the ulnar nerve that's involved, not median nerve. Median nerve of the hand is only sensory except for the thumb, but the ability to AB duck and act out your hands and do these kind of um, cr crossover techniques or opposition techniques, that involves an intact ulnar nerve and specifically what's called a deep motor branch. So knowing this, we need to know which, how to target that nerve and which acupuncture points corresponds to that deep motor branch so that we help this patient with this, with this issue. Now I jumped a little bit too, too quickly. I forgot to mention that another patient's symptom was spasticity, which is common in, in uh, multiple sclerosis. And um, this is where a lot of people would know if they study that's a gel style scalp acupuncture, acupuncture, they might use what's called a chorea and tremor line to treat spasticity. But I'm gonna show you where my MRI research has found um, to help understand why that area is able to help with spasticity. Okay? Because once you understand that, then that area is not just limited to spasticity. The chorea tremor line, I'm gonna give you a little hint, can be used for Tourette syndrome, for Parkinson's disease, where people have difficulty turning on or turning off 
involuntary and involuntary movements. 